Step into the mysterious world of nursery rhymes, where innocent melodies carry dark secrets. We've all sung them without a second thought, but have you ever pondered the origins and meanings behind these childhood tunes? Brace yourself for a journey beyond the nursery as we shine a light on the eerie history of Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush. This rhyme, entwined with its ominous connection to death, holds a terrifying truth just waiting to be discovered. Welcome back, Darklings. Before delving into its origins, let's examine the most widely recognised rendition of this rhyme. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush, on a cold and frosty morning. Afterwards, an infinite number of verses follows, each explaining, this is the way we do different things, such as washing our face, combing our hair, brushing our teeth, and more. But no matter how many chores are described, they all end with repeating the first verse. Here we go round the mulberry bush on a cold and frosty morning. The song is accompanied by a lively dance and a playful game in which children form a circle with a mulberry tree at the centre or take turns pretending to be the tree. There are two prevailing theories to explain the origins of this nursery rhyme. One, rather unsettling, is associated with the grim reality of the death penalty, which we'll look at shortly. But for now, let's first explore the notion that the rhyme humorously mocks King James I for a blunder he made in the 17th century. Rarely does England witness the demise of an industry before it even begins, yet such was the fate when James I, in the early 1600s, resolved that England must establish its own silk industry to rival those of France and Italy. Mulberry tree leaves happen to be the ideal sustenance for silkworms, the larvae of silk moths. The cocoons they spin are harvested to yield raw silk. During the reign of James I, England endeavoured to replicate the prosperity of other nations by fostering a domestic silk industry, thereby avoiding costly imports and potentially enriching King James in the process. James embarked on an ambitious endeavour, planting thousands of mulberry trees and establishing his own four-acre mulberry garden within the grounds of St James's Palace, now nestled in the northwest corner of the garden behind Buckingham Palace, along with an adjoining corner in Green Park. His consort, Queen Anne of Denmark shared his fervour and also oversaw the establishment of a mulberry plantation, complete with a silkworm nursery, at Greenwich Palace on the south bank of the River Thames. In 1609, James took proactive steps, dispatching letters to all his lord lieutenants, offering them mulberry saplings or mulberry seeds to aid in the establishment of plantations capable of sustaining thousands of silkworms. To support his grand vision, James imported around 100,000 saplings for this monumental project. One of these original mulberry trees is believed to still stand proudly at Charlton House in Greenwich, London. At over 400 years old, it is not only one of the oldest mulberry trees in London, but also one of the oldest trees in the city, irrespective of species. However, despite James's diligent efforts, he ultimately made a tremendously costly mistake. While the preferred natural sustenance for silkworms is the leaves of the white mulberry tree, James planted thousands of black mulberry trees instead. While black mulberries are excellent for producing jam and other desserts, they are unsuitable for silk production. Unlike the white mulberry, which yields fine threads suitable for the fashion standards of the 17th century, the black mulberry only produces silk of inferior quality, rendering it useless for such purposes. We can only speculate on the amusement that must have spread throughout England at James's oversight and the profound embarrassment it likely caused the king himself. It's conceivable that the nursery rhyme originated from a tavern song, serving as a satirical jab at the king's misstep, evolving over time. The cold and damp English weather posed another challenge, as it was unsuitable for the silk moth caterpillar, accustomed to warmer climates like those in China and India hence the line, on a cold and frosty morning. However, in the earliest surviving publication of the rhyme, found in Rhymes, Fireside Stories and Amusements of Scotland, from 1842, the final line diverges from mentioning the cold morning. Instead, it includes, around the merry matanzi. This phrase, found in various Scottish rhymes and jigs, occasionally appears as merry matanzi, yet its precise meaning remains shrouded in mystery. It could be interpreted as a variation of Merry Maids, possibly referencing Mary Queen of Scots Ladies-in-Waiting, known as the Four Marys, or it may evoke the Virgin Mary. 
This perhaps explains why children curtsy at the end of the game rather than fall over, as is customary in other ring games, such as Ring a Ring a Roses. You may have also noticed the differing lines of this is the way the ladies walk and this is the way they wash the clothes. These variations align with the second theory regarding the rhyme's origin, that it was crafted by female inmates at a prison in Wakefield, Yorkshire. A mulberry tree has graced the prison grounds for approximately 400 years, offering a plausible backdrop for the genesis of this tale. Legend has it that the tree was originally planted from a cutting taken from a mulberry tree at the nearby Hatfield Hall, which was likely one of James I's mulberry trees. Today, Wakefield Prison stands as a high security facility, yet its origins trace back to 1594 when it was established as a house of correction. Initially designed as a place for the punishment and rehabilitation of impoverished individuals convicted of minor offences, it subjected inmates to harsh labour. Over time, the Wakefield House of Correction expanded its role to include prisoners awaiting trial and sentencing, evolving over time into a full-fledged prison. As the original structure deteriorated, a new prison was constructed in 1766, featuring a separate women's prison block completed in 1770. According to historian R.S. Duncan, a former governor of Wakefield Prison, the rhyme may have originated with the female prisoners of that era. They possibly engaged in walking around the mulberry tree in the yard for exercise before commencing their daily chores, such as washing clothes. The repetitive nature and monotony of their routine perhaps spurred them to invent a rhyme about their experiences. Some suggest they created the rhyme to entertain their visiting children, while others theorise that the yard containing the mulberry bush wasn't an exercise yard, but rather part of the route prisoners took while being led out to their public executions. In this darker interpretation, the rhyme could have been invented to taunt a prisoner, teasing them that they were headed to the gallows, with going round the mulberry bush, symbolising the path to their execution. There was certainly no shortage of hangings during this period in history. During the late 18th century, the English legal system, notoriously dubbed the Bloody Code, sanctioned over 220 offences in Britain punishable by death. These included seemingly trivial acts such as cutting down a tree or pilfering from a rabbit warren. The correlation of circling a mulberry tree with mundane chores does seem to lend credence to the rhyme's origins being intertwined with prison life at Wakefield. This theory has certainly been embraced enthusiastically by the prison itself, evident in various aspects of its identity. The mulberry bush is featured in the prison's coat of arms, while the staff dining hall is aptly named the Mulberry. The significance of the mulberry tree was further underscored when it was shortlisted for the UK Tree of the Year Award in 2016. Sadly, the original mulberry tree succumbed to a beetle infestation just a year later and had to be cut down. However, the enduring power of nursery rhymes prevailed. It was discovered that a prison officer had taken cuttings from the tree in the 1980s, and these cuttings had since matured into healthy trees. One of these cuttings was replanted in the original spot within the prison grounds, while another now graces the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, ensuring that the legacy of the tree lives on. But what do you think? Is Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush referencing James I's blunder, or originates from Wakefield Prison? Or maybe you have your own ideas. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if your thirst for nursery rhyme origin still lingers, don't forget to subscribe and explore the rest of my channel. See you in a future video.